This is Five on Your Side at noon, focused on you. We begin this Friday at noon with the weather. Here's a live look at downtown. Sunny and mild right now, but really heating up as we move into the weekend. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. It may actually be warm enough to turn on the air conditioners for the first time. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell here for Jim. He has the weather first forecast. And yeah, I think this weekend some of us will make that flip the switch to the AC as temperatures go back into the mid 80s. The good news is the warmth is coming without the humidity this weekend, but it's not here just yet. And in that process, we still have a bright sky and a breezy afternoon across the by state area. Right now, a few scattered clouds out in St. Charles. As you go west of St. Louis, lesser cloud cover. Looking off to the east, there's a little more in the way of cloudiness. That's a look in fluorescent right now. Look at those trees. Everything's really greening up nicely and look at the wind gusts. They're in that 25 to 35 mile per hour range for most of us. That's whipping the pollen out of those trees and mulberries on the high side. As you look across the region early this morning, the clouds were mostly east of St. Louis, that upper level system pressing away. And as it does so, it looks like for the remainder of the afternoon hours, we're going to be pretty quiet, just breezy. We're already up to 64 degrees. And as we go through this afternoon, that breeze and those gusty winds could lead to a bit of an elevated fire danger for some, especially west and northwest of St. Louis, where there was much less rain earlier this week. Big time weekend warming. Okay, we're breaking that down in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Scott. New developments today in the evacuation of a Metro East school. It turns out there was never a natural gas or carbon monoxide leak at St. Clair Catholic School in O'Fallon, Illinois. Back on April 4th, 25 students and an adult from the school were sent to the hospital with a variety of health complaints. Now, Fire Chief Brad White says they experienced psychosomatic symptoms from seeing a classmate faint during morning mass. White says hearing adults talk about gas levels and being evacuated from the building caused anxiety among many of the other students in attendance. Chief White says firefighters did find a gas leak in the kitchen, but it wasn't big enough to affect human health. The Wentzville School District now looking for a new superintendent. Last night, Danielle Tormala made the surprise announcement she would immediately go on sabbatical and would retire at the end of the year. She'd been superintendent at the district since 2022. Neither Tormala nor the school board have shared specifics on her retirement. It appears the Millennium Hotel is for sale. The vacant pink building located in downtown St. Louis has been a target for eminent domain. According to online posts on LoopNet, that building is now on the block. No price is listed. The property is currently owned by a real estate company in Singapore. The 28-story hotel was once a venue for weddings and high-profile events. It is now crumbling. A business in Soje facing a lawsuit from the Illinois Attorney General. Just 90 minutes ago, Kwame Raoul announced a lawsuit against Jet Enterprises, alleging the company improperly stored hazardous chemicals, dumped chemical waste, and contaminated water in the area. He says the company's practices pose a danger to the environment and to the health and welfare of local residents. We've reached out to that company. We have not heard back. Changes are coming to the checkout lanes at the Walmart in Shrewsbury. Starting Sunday, the store will begin removing the self-checkout lanes. They're transitioning back to traditional checkouts. The store's communications director says the changeover will take about two weeks to complete. He says the decision is based on feedback, shopping patterns, and business needs in the area. Residents in Bridgeton are choosing between two candidates for mayor right now. On the ballot in today's special election are City Councilman Randy Hine, the current acting mayor, and Don Good, who served as assistant to the former mayor. Mayor Terry Briggs died two months ago. Today's winner will officially serve out the rest of Briggs' term. Polls close at 7 p.m. Police trying to return a stockpile of stolen power tools, appliances, and bicycles back to their owners. Officers found it all during a raid last Tuesday. Three people were arrested as part of a suspected burglary ring. Only on Five on Your Side, our Robert Townsend talked with a neighbor who says he saw it all. 
a trail of tools, a heap of home appliances, lots of lumber, and plenty of personal objects. Those are just some of the more than 100 stolen goods St. Louis Police Department's South Patrol Burglary Squad says it found inside this Ellendale home last Tuesday morning. I saw bicycles, uh, air conditioner, uh, heater combinations, ladders, tires. This neighbor asked us to not show his face. He says armed officers and SWAT team members pulled up and swarmed the house in the 2700 block of Hermitage. The house was loaded with just all kinds of stuff. The police loaded up a big box truck and they said that they would probably have to come back with a couple more. Neighbors say police spent several hours packing up the items they say were stolen from homes, garages, businesses, and storage units. Neighbors also tell us for more than a year, they complained about the suspicious activity and possible drug dealing here. There's just a lot of traffic coming in and out and uh a lot of activity in the backyard as far as moving stuff around. People passed out in cars. Police arrested Gage Lutman, pictured here in a white t-shirt, the male homeowner, and a woman. Just last week, Lutman was charged in several other burglaries and wanted for possibly 25 more. Now, there's big relief. The whole neighborhood is excited. After the big bust, arrests, and the house is condemned. We just look at each other and just give everybody the thumbs up. That was Robert Townsend reporting. Now, if you think your stolen items might be in the stash that was found during the seizure, email police. You can find a link on how to do that at KSDK.com. Police in East St. Louis are looking for the men who broke into an animal shelter. Take a look at this surveillance video. It's from Gateway Pet Guardians. It shows two people making their way inside. The shelter says they took laptops, dog medicine, even leftover pizza. If you're desperate enough, to break in somewhere and then you know you're you're hungry of course i feel bad for you however you know we can't go about it that way and so we have some things that we're going to do on our part in terms of additional security things that we're going to put in place the shelter says none of the animals were disturbed in that incident today is national donate blue and green day you can help bring awareness to organ eye and tissue donations by wearing those colors. There are more than 100,000 people on the national transplant waiting list. Doctors say the need for organ donations is significant, particularly among minority communities. How do you address that is that you try and set up programs uh, and people who look like other people in the community. Um, so the, the approach, which is what they call the approach, is a lot easier. Yeah. But, but, but there is a need. We have blacks here that donate at a really high rate and present themselves for donation and actually do donate. So um, we encourage um, you know, people from you know, the minority community and black community and all communities to donate. One donor can save up to eight lives, with eye donors able to restore sight to two people. Tissue donors can enhance up to 75 lives. Still ahead, abortion takes center stage in American politics. The court ruling that has members of both parties calling a law too extreme. Plus, the trend that adds PJs in a show to your daily workout. 